Hi everybody, this is going to be uh, just a quick look at the Casio ProTrek PRW2500. Comes in a nice uh, kind of a thin, thin but stiff cardboard box. Got a stuffer sheet for uh, what to do if your watch doesn't work. Basically it just says charge it up you dummy. Uh, about atomic timekeeping. Here's the extra links that I uh, sized out. Took out four so it would fit my six and seven eighths inch circumference wrist. Instruction book. It's kind of big. However, uh, don't panic because it's in three languages. So only uh, only one third of this is is English. Just up to here. Underneath. The box itself is housed in a nice pressed paper box, kind of like particle board. And then for a store display, it's got this. Gives you a breakdown of all the features. Here's the films that were on the uh, across the crystal and bracelet onto the watch. Sorry about that. So, here you can see the titanium bracelet. It's got a flip lock here. And then, you push those in to get it open. Push that down, push that down. And there you go. That's what it looks like on a six and seven eighths inch wrist. Um, it looks pretty big, but thanks to these little uh, winglets, it's kind of what we call them unofficially on the uh, on the watch forums. Thanks to these little guys, it fits my small wrist pretty well. Uh, and they also they kind of swivel a little bit with this with the uh, bracelet, so it'll pretty much fit any size wrist pretty well. And you'll see even after. Even after I remove these four links, there's still one more on this side that's removable, and two more on this side that are removable. So this would even fit a woman's wrist as long as she's not too uh, self-conscious to wear a giant watch. It's uh, 51 millimeters across the case from here to here, not including buttons. So a little bit bigger if we include the buttons height you can see it's kind of thick uh, it may not be the best choice for to wear under a sleeve in the winter probably be getting caught on coat sleeves and stuff like that anyway under the features take it off so I can show you without contorting my wrist in some kind of a funny way okay so the first thing is the compass bezel if you're going to do any kind of uh, orienteering or anything outside, this could be uh, helpful. You can kind of use that in conjunction with the, the compass button here. So you hit that, hold it flat. North is indicated by the, the triple pointers here. I have to hold it flat, so if I don't hold it flat, then it goes hog wild. But anyway, the triple pointers is north. This is the number of degrees. What's nice about this watch is that you have the home time, you have the time of day on almost every screen. So even when you're messing around with the compass, it takes a reading for 5 or 10 seconds and then it turns off. So I know it's 6.54 p.m., 245 degrees, or whatever it is if I were to hold it flat. One press of the mode button over here brings it back to the home screen. Speaking of the home screen, let's, uh, let's see what's on there the top here you got the moon face it's at a half moon the day of the week this little triangle indicates that it synced last night this is the barometric trend chart so it's slowly been doing uh, going down kind of indicating that we may 
may be in for some cloudy weather soon. Year, um, July 12th, time of day is here, 6.54 p for p.m. If the p is not there, it means it's a.m. Above that, you can see a little DST, which indicates that it's on daylight savings time. Ooh. Alarms going off on the other watch. Um, at the bottom here, we've got uh, PS for power save mode. And then there's a little uh, LMH battery, so it's you can see the LCD segment is above the H for a high battery charge. Around the outside, if I hold it at just the right angle, it has kind of a purple hue to it. That's This is a solar panel. Okay. Um, now, this model has the moon phase, and, moon phase and tide graphs. Right now I have it selected to show the year, but if I push the adjust button down here, I can have it show the tide status instead. So right now we're, if there were a tide in Chicago, we would be at low tide. Since I don't really care about that being in Chicago, I usually just leave it on that display. Okay, the next screen. This is the tide display. This is how far we were 23 days into a 28 day moon phase. Barometric trend is still showing, the tide is showing. And uh, I'm not sure what the 6 o'clock is here. 6 a.m., maybe that's the next time it changes, but we still have the date. Okay. So the next mode is record. You can see the dot matrix display that's normally used for the, the barometric trend data is now used to show the number one, meaning that it's ready to record the first time I, uh, I hit record to save an altimeter reading. I have it set to display in feet, but it can also be changed to display in meters. And when you save that, it'll show you what your altitude was and then also what the, the time and day was. Then we have the alarm screen. So here it tells you that we're on alarm number one, that that alarm is off, and that the alarm is set for 9.28 a.m. If I push the center button, the barometer button on the side, that'll turn it on. And if I hold the adjust button for a second, that'll let me set it up hours, down hours, mode to get over to the minutes, adjust to stop the time and then to turn it on or off and then we can cycle either down or up through all the alarms alarm one alarm two alarm three alarm four alarm five and then the hourly chime they call it signal and then this is so that you can set it for to go off at maybe ten after five after every hour whatever as I said before, you can still see the time of day here, even when you're in this other mode messing around with it. Next screen is stopwatch. This is kind of slick. Uh, so if I'm using the stopwatch, I still have my barometer trend here. Stopwatch hours, minutes, seconds, and hundreds of a second. And I still have my time of day. So this big display is actually coming into its own here. You've got all the, you know, all the stopwatch features, this this acts as the start stop and this acts as the lap reset button so so it'll count like that when it gets up to an hour this will reset and that'll count up that'll count up one up to 24 hours if I want to take a split time I press this it tells me at the top that it's split this blinking apostrophe tells me it's still running so I can write down when the first runner went around or whatever Hit it again and it goes back to where it is. Bottom one to stop it, top one to reset. Next mode is the countdown timer. Now we don't have the barometric trend but we still have the time of day and right now it's set for a 10 minute countdown. During the last 10 seconds it'll start beeping, in the last 5 seconds it'll start beeping more urgently and then one big long beep when it reaches the end. So we'll stop here. Reset here, next mode 
here. You can see that's the mode button. They're all pretty well labeled. They're nice big buttons on this 2500 model. World time. So right now, this is the time in my home time zone, 6.59 p.m. And this, 12.59 a.m. is the time in Rome. I push this button to go east time zones, Paris, Madrid, London, Lisbon, Portugal, Universal Time, etc. And this button to go west. Pretty simple. So when you're traveling or whatever, you set it to whatever location you're in and that's your time and if you want to see what time it is back home don't want to wake someone up in the middle of the night or whatever then you look here 7 p.m. here 1 in the morning in Paris uh, RC for radio control we can see that July 12th at 1204 in the morning was the last time the watch synchronized with the atomic clock and back to the home screen so that's uh, most of the basic features uh, through the main mode now of course we have the direct the direct entry here compass barometer altimeter compass I kinda showed you before you hit that it kinda zeroes it now you can set this with a northerly calibration if you have a known true north or you can do a bi-directional calibration where you uh, let the magnetic sensor look hit a button and you turn it 180 degrees hit a button again and it sets itself and then there's also the uh, the declination so if you're off from the um, magnetic north line by however many degrees you can tell it the watch where you are and you'll still have an accurate compass reading you can see it read the compass for five seconds or so and then in order not to drain the battery it just it stops if you want to take another reading just hit the compass button again you can see here the dual layer LCD all the, the digits and everything are still there, but it's got another layer superimposed with the compass barometer. Actually, they call it this a triple sensor, um, but there's there's actually, the, the three sensors are actually barometer, compass, and thermometer. But I guess altimeter sounds a little more advanced, but the altimeter just uses the barometer uh, and calculates the height. So you have to recalibrate that pretty often when you're out hiking. Barometer reading. So you can see it uses the little pointer on a scale off to the side. Right now we're at 29.25 inches of mercury. If you're in a metric country, you can have that display in hectopascals. Uh, and also the temperature shows up on this screen. 86 degrees Fahrenheit now. Probably because I'm heating it up by holding it in my hand. It's more like it's 80 degrees in here. Again, you can see that you've got the time still. So all this data barometer, temperature, time, barometric trend all on one screen. Pretty slick. And the altimeter. Just got to think for a minute. And according to where I programmed it, it says we're at 600 feet above sea level. Still see, see we have the time of day there. Back to the home screen. The titanium bracelet um, I'll put the weight of the unit, uh, or you can look it up on Casio's site, but it's very light. It's nowhere near as heavy as you would think for being a watch this big. Uh, they have a, a, a version available without a bracelet also, um, but then you have a kind of a strap tip that's, that's hanging up here. Not quite as comfortable in my opinion. I have one of the other ProTrek models, uh, and it's not quite as good as with the bracelet. This really is worth the extra 80 bucks. It's very light, very sturdy. Uh, the only thing is it seems to scratch a little bit easier than stainless steel. I don't know if you see it, but I've only worn this about a day and a half. There's a bit of a rub mark on the inside of one of these links. There it is. See that there? And when I sized it, kind of scratched up the edge of this link just a tiny little bit. It's just superficial, but... So it's not the hardest finished titanium, but it's still very light. They couldn't use stainless steel uh, because it would mess with the compass. So they had to use titanium, which sounds extra fancy and also doesn't interfere with the compass. So, nice watch. Casio ProTrek PRW2500T, where the T stands for titanium bracelet. Thanks for watching.